Hello, everybody. We are back with Chapter 6 in Farmer Boy. And yesterday, El Manzo had just finished up his birthday, celebrating his birthday. And he was thinking he had to go to school the next day. But then he found out that there would not be school the next day because they were going to go cut ice. And today we're going to find out what it means to cut ice. If you're following along in the physical copy of the book, we are on page 65. Otherwise, you will find chapter six in the document of Bright Thinker with this video. Filling the ice house. The weather was so cold that the snow was like sand underfoot. A little water thrown into the air came down as tiny balls of ice. Even on the south side of the house at noon, the snow did not soften. This was the perfect weather for cutting ice, because when the blocks were lifted from the pond, no water would drip. It would freeze instantly. The sun was rising, and all the eastern slopes of the snowdrifts were rosy in its light. When Almanzo snuggled under the fur robes between Father and Royal and the big bobsled, and they set out to the pond on Trout River. The horses trotted briskly, shaking jingles from their bells. Their breath steamed from their nostrils, and the bobsled's runners squeaked on the hard snow. The cold air crinkled inside Almanzo's tingling nose. nose, but every minute the sun shone more brightly, striking tiny glitters of red and green light from the snow, and all through the woods there were sparkles of sharp white lights in icicles. It was a mile to the pond in the woods, and once Father got out to put his hands over the horse's nose. Their breaths had frozen over their nostrils, making it hard for them to breathe. Father's hands melted the frost, and they went on briskly. French Joe and Lazy John were waiting on the pond where the bobsled drove up. They were Frenchmen who lived in the little log houses in the woods. They had no farms. They hunted and trapped and fished. They sang and they joked and they drank and they danced and they drank red wine instead of cider. When father needed a hired hand, hired man, they worked for him and he paid them with salt pork from the barrels down in the cellar. They stood on the snowy pond in their tall boots and their plaid jackets and their fur caps with fur earmuffs and the frost of their breath was on their long mustaches. Each had an axe on his shoulder and they carried cross-cut saws. A cross-cut saw has a long, narrow blade with wooden handles at the ends. Two men must pull it back and forth across the edge of whatever they wanted to saw in two. But they could not saw ice that way because the ice was solid underfoot, like a floor. It had no edge to saw across. When father saw them, he laughed and called out, You flipped the penny yet? Everybody laughed but Almanzo. He did not know the joke. So French Joe told him, once two Irishmen were sent out to saw ice with a cross-cut saw. They had never sawed ice before. They looked at the ice, and they looked at the saw, till at last Pat took a penny out of his pocket, and he says, Now, Jamie, be fair. Heads or tails? Who goes below? Then Almanzo laughed to think of anyone going down into the dark, cold water under the ice to pull one end of the cross-cut saw. It was funny that there were people who didn't know how to saw ice. I don't. He trudged with the others across the ice to the middle of the pond. A sharp wind blew there, driving wisps of snow below, before it. Above the deep water, the ice was smooth and dark, swept almost bare of snow. Elmanzo watched while Joe and John chopped a big three-cornered hole in it. They lifted out broken piece of ice and carried them away, leaving the hole full of open water. She's about 20 inches thick, Lazy John said. Then saw the ice 20 inches, said Father. Lazy John and French Joe knelt at the edge of the hole. They lowered their crosscut saws into the water and they began to saw. Nobody pulled the ends of the saws under the water. Side by side, they sawed two straight cracks through the ice, 20 inches apart and 20 feet long. Then with the ax, John broke the ice across and a slab 20 inches wide, 20 inches thick and 20 feet long rose a little and floated free. With a pole, John pushed the slab toward the three-cornered hole, and as the end was thrust out, crackling, the thin ice freezing on the water, John sawed off 20-inch lengths of it. Father picked up the cubes with the big iron ice tongs and loaded them on the bobsleds. Elmanzo ran to the edge of the hole, watching the saw. Suddenly, right on the very edge, he slipped. He 
felt himself falling headlong into the dark water. His hands couldn't catch hold of anything. He knew he would sink and be drawn under the solid ice. The swift current will put him under the ice where nobody could find him. He drowned, held down by the ice in the dark. French Joe grabbed him just in time. He heard a shout and he felt a rough hand jerk him by one leg and he felt a terrific crash and then he was lying on his stomach on the good solid ice. He got up on his feet and father was coming running. Father stood over him big and terrible. You ought to have the worst whipping of your life, father said. Yes, father, Elmanzo whispered. He knew it. He knew he should have been more careful. A boy nine years old is too big to do foolish things because he doesn't stop to think. Elmanzo knew that and he felt ashamed. He shrank up small inside his clothes and his legs shivered, afraid of the whipping. Father's whippings hurt, but he knew he deserved to be whipped. The whip was on the bobsled. I won't thrash you this time, father decided, but see to it that you stay away from the edge. Yes, father, Almanzo whispered. He went away from the little hole and he did not go near it again. Father finished loading the bobsled and then he spread the lap ropes on top of the ice and Almanzo rode on them with father and Royal back to the ice house near the barns. The ice house was built of boards with wide cracks between. It was set high from the ground on wooden blocks and it looked like a big cage. Only the floor and the roof were solid. On the floor was a huge mound of sawdust. Oopsie. Which father had hauled from the lumber mill. I'm going to show you this picture. This is a picture of them cutting the ice. With a shovel, father spread the sawdust three inches thick on the floor. On this, he laid the cubes of ice three inches apart. And then he drove back to the pond and Almanzo went to work with Royal in the ice house. They filled every crack between the cubes with sawdust and they tamped it down tightly with sticks. Then they shoveled the whole mound of sawdust on top of the ice in a corner where it had been covered the floor with the cubes of ice and packed them in sawdust. Then they covered it all with sawdust three inches thick. They worked as fast as they could, but before they finished, Father came back with another load of ice. He laid down another layer of ice cubes three inches apart and drove away, leaving them to fill every crevice tightly with sawdust and spread sawdust over the top and shovel the rest of the mound of sawdust up again. They worked so hard that the exercise kept them warm, but long before noon, Almanzo was hungrier than wolves. He couldn't stop work long enough to run into the house for a donut. All of his middle was hollow with the gnawing inside it. He knelt on the ice, pushing sawdust into the cracks with his mittened hands and pounding it down with a stick as fast as he could. And then he asked Royal, what would you like best to eat? They talked about spare ribs and turkey with dressing and baked beans and crackling cornbread and all other good things. But Almanzo said that what he liked most in the world was fried apples and onions. When at last they went into dinner, there on the table was a big dish of them. Mother knew what he liked best, and she had cooked it for him. Almanzo ate four large helpings of apples and onions fried together. He ate roast beef and brown gravy and mashed potatoes and cream carrots and boiled turnips and countless slices of buttered bread with crab apple jelly. It takes a great deal to feed a growing boy, Mother said. And she put a thick slice of bird's nest pudding on his bare plate and handed him the pitcher of sweetened cream speckled with nutmeg. Almanzo poured the heavy cream over the apples nestle, nestle, nested in the fluffy crust. The syrupy brown juice curled up on the edges of the cream. Almanzo took up his spoon and he ate every bit. Then until chore time, he and Royal worked in the ice house. All the next day they worked and all the next day. Just at dusk on the third day, Father helped them spread the last layer of sawdust over the topmost cubes of ice in the peak of the ice house roof. And that job was done. Buried in the sawdust, the blocks of ice would not melt in the hottest summer weather. One at a time, they would be dug out and Mother would make ice cream and lemonade and cold eggnog. All right, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this chapter that we just read, chapter six.
going back to the very beginning of the chapter, what is the punchline of the flip a penny joke? Yes, the punchline is who's going to go below? And why do you think that the joke is about Irishmen and not about Frenchmen? Yeah, because the Frenchmen are telling the joke. They're not going to tell jokes about themselves. What do you think would have happened if Almanzo had actually fallen through the ice? He would have drowned, wouldn't he? He would have been caught underneath the ice, and they would have found him when it thawed, and he would have drowned. Why do you think that the sawdust is used to cover the top layer of ice and fill all the cracks? Exactly. It's used for insulation. And finally, how do the wilders use the ice that they store in the summer months? Mm-hmm. They make ice cream and eggnog. And what was the other thing? Oh, lemonade. Mm-hmm. Sounds good, right? All right, we just have a few notes today. Go ahead and put the heading on your paper, your name, the date, 2-26-21, and the lesson is 6, chapter 6. The first word that we have today is bobsled. Bob sled. It's a compound word. A long sled made of two shorter sleds joined together. Say it. A long sled made of two shorter sleds joined together. Say it. A long sled made of two shorter sleds joined together. Say it as you're writing it down. A long sled made of two shorter sleds joined together. All right, plaid is the next word we're going to use. Hmm. Well, it's spelled P-L-A-I-D. I guess the I is silent. Cloth with a checkered pattern. Cloth with a checked pattern. Cloth with a checked pattern. Say it as you're writing it down. Cloth with a checked pattern. And then finally, the last one is our lap robe. It's a compound word, lap robe, lap robe. A blanket or fur piece used to cover the lap, legs, and feet. Say it. A blanket or fur piece used to cover the lap, legs, and feet. Say it. A blanket or fur piece used to cover the lap, legs, and feet. Say it as you're writing it down. A blanket, yeah, oops, I spelled that wrong, or fur piece used to cover the lap, ergo the lap robe, legs, and feet. All right, for our cursive today, we're going to go back into Farmer Boy. We're going to go to the last page, page 74, and we're going to go to the very last paragraph on page 74 that talks about the ice in the ice house. Buried in the sawdust, Remember, we're writing this in cursive writing. Your blocks are stacked. Both of your feet are firmly on the ground. Both of your hands are on your desk. And your paper is slanted slightly, depending on your if you're right or left-handed. Buried in 
sawdust, comma, the blocks of ice would not melt. The blocks of ice would not melt in the hottest summer's weather in the hottest Go back and cross all of those T's. The hottest summer weather period. One at a time, they would be dug out. One, oops. I messed that up. One at a time they would be dug out, comma, and mother would make ice cream and lemonade and cold eggnog. And mother would make Ice cream, it's a hyphenated word. So write ice, lift your pencil, make your hyphen, dot your I. Cream is the second part of that word. Comma. Nope, no comma. Ice cream. And lemonade, lemon. And cold eggnog. Again, we have a hyphenated word. Write egg, lift your pencil, hyphenate, then write nog, period. Okay, I did make a mistake, so I have a cross out in mine because I'm writing an ink, not pencil so you guys can see it better. There's the notes for today. And that's all I got for you. You guys have a great weekend, and we will be back on Monday with Chapter 7. Bye-bye.